weeks, those fabulous elusive t-shirts and videos of previous meetings and events, check out his website, zenbitchslap.com. So to get things underway, I've chosen from page, um, at the bottom of page 53, the last paragraph. Uh, that was natural, but let us think a little more closely. Without knowing it, had we not been brought to where we stood by a certain kind of faith? For did we not believe in our own reasoning? Did we not have confidence in our ability to think? What was that but a sort of faith? Yes, we had still, we, we had been faithful, objectively faithful to the God of reason. So in one way or another, we discovered that faith had been involved all the time. We found too that we had been worshippers. What a state of mental goose flesh that used to bring up, bring on, that used to bring on. Had we not variously worshipped people, sentiment, things, money, and ourselves, and then with, with a better motive, had we not worshipfully beheld the sunset, the sea, or a flower, who of us had not loved something or somebody? How much did these feelings, these loves, these worships have to do with pure reason? Little or nothing we saw at last. Were not these things the tissue out of which our lives were constructed? Did not these feelings, after all, determine the course of our existence? It was impossible to say we had no capacity for faith or love or worship. In one form or another, we had been living by faith and little else. Okay, so that's the reading, Paul. I'll hand it over to you. Well, thanks. Thanks, Ben. Uh... Welcome everybody. If anybody's new, this is not an AA meeting. It's just a certain, uh, let's give it a title of a workshop or whatever, but it's not an AA meeting. And I'm here just to share a perspective that was sort of brought about through being sober, really, and uh, rooted in the big book. And so here, this is a very important, it comes out of we agnostics. And I had been, I was at a meeting one day where it was a book study and they were reading these passages. I never heard it as a topic, but it really captured uh, my interest because of the idea of faith. Because uh, what he's describing there is the trusting in the finite self. Yeah. And perhaps there's a way, better way, which is trusting the infinite. So you want to call it trust, but faith, it's, I think it's, uh, they can be used, both words can be used to imply the same thing. So perhaps there is a better way is the idea of trusting the infinite rather than finite self. So he's describing that the conditions we found ourselves and we find ourselves now are really brought about by a certain kind of faith, yeah? And on a broad level, there's two basic uh, sets of conditions we can be in, in a certain way. We can be in the conditions that are brought about by a, a faith in the infinite or the conditions that are brought about by a faith in the finite self. And of course, then there's tons of shit grows from there. Yeah. But it's really that fundamental. It's like the, supposedly Jesus Christ said, you can't serve two masters at the same time. Yeah. So basically, I think that's implying the same thing. Yeah. And a lot of times our faith in the infinite is really rooted in a faith in the finite self which is crazy. Eh? <laughs> so even our faith in the infinite is being used to reinforce the faith in the finite self. And when people say they have no faith, there's faith in that, isn't there? So the statement, I have no faith is based on faith. <laughs> you can't get away from it. Now, what is it? That's the trick, you know, what is faith? 
let's say there would be a certain faith in the condition of being convinced, yes? So if you were thoroughly convinced of something, you would have faith in that understanding. And that understanding over the years would prove it's worthy of faith, yes? So the understanding that any life run on self-will is not going to be successful, I have faith in that statement. I have faith that self manifests in various ways is what has defeated me. I have faith in that statement. Yeah, I do not have faith in the statement that I manufactured my own misery. I don't have faith in that. That's not my experience. Yeah. I don't believe I'm the problem. I'm the harbinger of the problem. I'm the, I, I give the problem the possibility of being a problem. I do that. I play a lot of roles, but I don't think I am the problem. Yeah, I don't have faith in that at all. So do I have faith in the thought system? No, I don't. It's a failed system. Yeah, I followed it so many times with the belief that I, it was going to lead me to some kind of destination. And I usually ended up in jails, institutions and death. Yes. I mean, if I was a horse and I saw that jockey coming into the barn, I'd fucking flip out. Yeah. I'd be kicking and winnowing and everything because I would have a feeling pretty right on what was going to come about if that jockey got on the horse, me. <laughs> It wasn't going to be a nice ride for the for the horse. Yeah. So, I mean, one of the most important statements I feel in the book concerning fear is, why do you have it? Why do you have why do you have it today? And I really feel like it has you. I don't think I have fear. It's not like I invited over for a coffee. It seems to intrude on the day. Yeah. Yeah, it's like an uninvited guest, <laughs> which is very demanding. So, but let's say, all right, I have fear. Why am I, why, why am I in so much fear today? Isn't it because self-reliance has failed us? What would self-reliance could be said faith in self, yeah? Or trust in the finite. They, he says it in a lot of different ways, but it's the same, it's the same, uh, meaning so yeah so my faith is what's producing the fear yeah ha that's a trip eh so the faith in what the thoughts are, are informing me about myself and others about yesterday and tomorrow about this and that the faith in that is causing a lot of anxiety <laughs> i mean how could what's not happening cause anxiety? How could next week cause anxiety today? How could it? It's not here, is it? There's got to be some bridge that allows next week to have an effect now. I would say it's faith in the thoughts about next week. Yeah. <laughs> And if my life is dictated on those anxieties, I'm in the act knowing it or not, because I'm like a horse truly being ridden in a sense. I'm under the, the act of being identified as that or having faith in the finite. Yeah. And you could see that this caption or this aspect of my life at that moment is a life run on self-will. And now, why would I be surprised that it's not going to be successful? The understandings there, these are glasses that help us see what we don't seem to see. The obviousness of what's going on. Yeah. So we were presented an understanding in the big book a lot. And that understanding is self has defeated us. That's one of the statements. Yeah. You need to be convinced of that. Why? So that that convincing, that which turns into a reliance on self, now that convincing realizes self is a failed system. So it's open to rely on something other than self, yes? And not as self, 
I mean a shift of interest from self to the higher power. Not, yeah? Not initiated or followed through by self. No, a loss of interest in self and an interest in the higher power. Yeah? What happens? Doesn't your life change? Does your address change? Probably not. Maybe. Yeah. Do your, do your, uh, what you like for shoes change? Maybe not. Maybe. Yeah. But your life will change for sure. Yeah. Because now there's faith in the infinite and you're at the effect of that instead of faith in the finite self being at the effect of that. Yeah. You're going to be at the effect of something. <laughs> You are the horse in this in this uh, drama. You're not the jockey. <laughs> You're either being ridden by the lower power or the higher power, <laughs> if you want to call it that. There's no option. Yeah. <laughs> Why would they say you're driven by a hundred forms of something? Or yes, or you? I feel can manufacture misery. I don't believe you manufacture it. I believe the facilities that comprise us can manufacture a lot of stuff. It can manufacture compassion and empathy and service. Yeah, it ba it's based on who's running the facility. Yeah. Someone runs the facility, they make incredible electric cars. Yeah. Other one takes it over, they make a, a war armaments, yes? Is it the factory that did it? No. It was used to do it. Yes. So I do not believe, I have no faith that I manufactured my own misery. If I do, man, and the eye is going to be around, I'm going to be concerned about manufacturing misery, even though, even when I'm not manufacturing misery. <laughs> <laughs> if it's me, well, who knows, yeah? But if it's not me, and there's been a clarity, and now my life is more based on, let's say, non-self, yeah? I have faith in that, that I'm not going to be manufacturing much misery today for myself, for the animals, for others, yeah? Yeah, I do, and it's... Where does that come from? Well, through observation. I haven't been a manufacturer of misery in, for quite a while. Yeah. <laughs> does the factory have to keep producing the same product it used to produce? No. It can be turned into another purpose, yes? Isn't that what AA does? It uses us for another purpose, to be a maximum use for others, yes? We're driven by another purpose. We have a different agenda. Yeah. And therefore, we get changed to fit that agenda. Yeah. So I'm a believer. I have faith that you have it by giving it away. I don't believe you have to have it to give it away. I believe you have it by giving it away. I do. I have faith in that. Yeah. Yeah. Without any riches, riches, I believe that which is all the riches in the world is available right now. Yeah. I don't think I have to fulfill tons of requirements. Even in the big book, it says very clearly, you're going to be taken care of by this new employer if you stay close to it, which you can't be far from everywhere. Yes. <laughs> I mean, so that's requirements already met and do its works well. It's not specifically saying Watts works or his works. It's a pretty broad field, yeah? Maybe everything is his works or its works, yeah? So basically, you fulfilled the requirements already, yeah? So what, what can you expect? Well, being all powerful, it's gonna take care of you. When, now, where, here, I mean, you're being employed. It's not the old employer. It's not a future employer. You're being used now, and that's how it's going to use you. The, the contract is, hey, listen, 
I'm going to use you, and being all powerful, I'm going to take care of you while I'm using you. Yeah? All you got to do is stay close to me. You can't be far from me. And hey, do some good works or do works. Yeah? And I'll leave it to your gut to figure out what's what works and what does it. Yes? Yeah. Okay. There's the contract. Go to work. What does the day have entailed for me? Maybe not much. All right. I have the ability to respond to that. Maybe there's a lot to do the next day. I have the ability to respond to that. Yeah. Do I want to do a whole lot when there's nothing to do? No. Do I don't when I I do want to not do anything when there's a lot to do. <laughs> and it works out anyway. <laughs> So I win-win, really. <laughs> I can respond to nothing, and then I can respond to a lot with nothing. <laughs> and figure I'm taken care of. <laughs> and it's panned out for 34 years. So. <laughs> I know there was a clause written in the contract. At 34 and a half years, everything goes to hell. No. I don't see it that way. <laughs> Everything goes to hell could still be turned into heaven. Yes? By this power, if everything turned into hell, it could still be put to use as heaven. Yes? Yeah. Maybe the best shit would come out of me if everything went to hell. Who knows? I have no idea. That's the good news. I don't really have any idea. <laughs> of how it's going to be or how it's supposed to be. I don't. I don't think that's my job, really. You know, I love the statement we have in our community. You know, don't don't be in the outcome business. Yeah, it's a pretty good state. You know, suit up and show up. Yeah, and let go of the results. <laughs> so... <laughs> I say the most important thing is let go of the results. Yeah. Yeah. The suit up and the show up, sometimes life forces you to do that. So, yeah. Well, I, I'm happy to be here. Uh, that's what we're sharing. Like there was a great old book, Chuck C., Chuck Chamberlain, The New Pair of Glasses. I'm, I've been hooked on that little idea for the last few weeks. Yeah. Here's a pair of glasses. Today, do a mini inventory. Instead of looking at the resentments as yours, look at Adam as resentments. Yeah. Instead of looking at the fears your, as yours, look them at them as fears. And then see the fear is a manifestation of self in one's life. They're not yours. Yeah. See what happens. Maybe it'll bring you a different understanding than looking at your resentments, your fears, and your acting out. Yes. See, try them. And if it does, and you like that understanding, you know, keep borrowing the glasses. Yeah. Yeah. The beautiful thing about the glasses, they don't create a dependency. You're, back, you're brought back to natural vision. You are, sooner or later. Yeah? Yeah. Right now, we may need some correct, corrections and we need corrective lenses, but our eyes are just fine. Our spiritual eye is fine. All we need to do is correct a little of some misunderstandings. Yeah, have them replaced with a clearer understanding, and then you start seeing without much aid. Yeah. This is about being free. It's not about managing harm. It's about being free, yeah? Free from the bondage of self. It doesn't say, give me the ways to deal with the bondage of self better. No, it says, please relieve us of the bondage of self. Relieve us of this, yeah? To be free of it, yeah? Will, th will there be the act of the bondage of self? Yes, but now that act won't bind you to self. You'll see it as other, yes? You'll see that which is applying the handcuffs and what it applies the handcuffs to is not you. Yeah. Hallelujah.
and take, instead of having complete faith in the head that sees you <laughs> in a way that doesn't promote a life of satisfaction and contentment. It doesn't. It doesn't see you in that light. It sees you like a parasite would see a host. Really. Yeah. You want to try to make it a service animal? Go ahead. It's going to bite you in the ass sooner or later. Yeah. It's not going to be your amigo. It's not going to be your friend. Yeah. It has a, it has a, an antagonistic agenda concerning you being happy, joyous, and free. <laughs> It sees you as, it sees us as a source of life and expression. It doesn't see us as something it wants to help. <laughs> really. Yeah. It wants to feed on us. And it really wants to make an expression here. It wants to make a splash. So as long as the head is driving you crazy in the head and doesn't compel an action, that's incredible progress. Yeah. Yeah. I may have a feeling I hate my girlfriend, but I never say it. Yeah. <laughs> and it passes. If I say it once, oh, <laughs> that thing can linger for years. Yeah. So it loves to do that because it doesn't have, it doesn't leave a, put, a footprint in our life unless it can compel an action. Yeah. I don't get a prison sentence yet by the thoughts that are happening. I go sent, I'm sent to prison by some actions. Yes. So that's a huge different ball game, isn't it? Oh, I'm upset by the thoughts. Fucking great. Live with it. Yeah. <laughs> but if the thoughts are compelling actions and then you're jackpotted and you're in a divorce and you're going to jail and you've got to, fucking go to court every other week. Yes. That's having a huge sway on your life. Yes. Yes. So, and I feel the ones that constantly break the surface and compel actions are usually called my thoughts. I don't see thoughts having the ability to do it, but if there's a claiming of the thoughts as mine, they seemingly are given an ability to do it. Yeah. They are. Somehow they get turbocharged. I have such a belief in the, the false evidence that I act as if it's real and then a reality shows up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be in that situation anymore, do you? You don't want to be tattooed by thoughts like ink tattoos. I'm not talking about henna tattoos. You can wash off. I mean, ink tattoos, like a five year prison sentence or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's important to, you know, let thoughts have their little uh, parade on that imaginary road. Yeah. You just don't want them to get out. Yeah. And I do not believe you have the ability to stop them if you keep calling them yours. Yeah. If you recognize them as alcoholic thoughts or something, you do have suddenly there's an ability not to follow through on the thoughts. There is. I mean, that's what's happened to me. I don't jackpot myself anymore. Yeah. The thoughts would love it to happen, but it doesn't happen because there's a power greater than the thoughts now. Yeah. I don't even think the thoughts are, that have power, it's the my, we're the power. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. And this power being directed with by faith to the finite self produces a lot of fucking effects. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I mean, can you imagine if you realized you're like a fucking machine gun? Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to have the wrong hands on the trigger. You can really cause a lot of havoc. Yeah, so realizing the power that's here 
and has brought a great humility. And I'd much rather have it be directed wisely than unwisely. Yeah. I may not have a huge amount of say, but I lean towards that. And I feel the way of life AA has offered and what guides that way of life runs my life wisely. Yeah. Which is awesome. Because I swear I couldn't not be arrested, you know, in a week out there. Seriously, when I drank, I realized immediately I had magnetic appeal to people in uniform. I put out a lot of vibration or something that attracted uniform people. It was insane. I got arrested quite a lot this life. I could not believe it in very strange scenarios. Yeah, I knew something was like a beacon was going off and setting off like a dog whistle. <laughs> I cannot let that fucking other thing do it anymore yeah no way <laughs> i don't want to have a roommate in prison i don't you know i don't want to share an open toilet <laughs> if it has to happen i probably will adapt but i'd rather not yeah <laughs> so here's the power that i seem to express i'm going to hand it over to a much wiser director or a new employer and let it do what it wants with it. Yeah. There's a lot of side benefits, a lot of fringe benefits in that deal. Yeah. Cause this place is a win, win. It's not a win, lose. I don't win by other people losing. Yeah. I can be helpful to others and be helpful to my, to me. Yeah. It's not like one or the other. Yes. My being helpful to others is helpful in this situation. Yeah. What an incredible deal. So, yeah, I'm a big believer. The faith has been moved from the finite to the infinite. I observe it. It's pretty locked in, I hope. <laughs> I get messages from the old planet, Paul, but they don't have much. Uh, it's like an echo. They've traveled a long way. You're fucked. <laughs> They don't really have a, it's not like a sudden CNN news flash anymore. It's like an echo of an old news, fake news, you know. <laughs> it hits the shore. It was, it was, it was forecasting being a new tsunami and it, tsunami and it hits the shore like a little, like a half foot wave. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you better get ready for the tsunami. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> uh, we're, we are so lucky, man. We are so lucky. to have found these certain things out, you know, no matter how much the cost was, it's invaluable. Yeah. It's invaluable to be convinced of things that are false evidence. Yeah. It's invaluable finally to get cleared, to have that cleared up. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it costs. I don't feel it now. I mean, I got run over by a car twice, so I always feel the effects. And I was loaded that night. Yeah. And I was listening to the head. And it was a cold, freezing night. And my head said the bar that I had just left that only had two people in it, the waitress and the bartender, my head said a big party had erupted there. I believed the thoughts. I got back in my car and I was introduced to a Chevy Monte Carlo running me over twice. <laughs> I found out much later, there was still only two people at that bar. No party had erupted. <laughs> My future wife wasn't there. Nothing. Yeah. All I was missing was a Chevy Monte Carlo <laughs> running me over twice. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> This is what's happening. You flirt with the devil and then something maybe really serious happens. Yes. 
that can almost be life altering. Yeah, you fuck around enough and you're thinking, hey, I can manage this. And then suddenly the ante gets upped to such an incredible level. Yeah. And then you see uh, how thoughts can have an effect. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. I mean, I thought it was over abusive once one getting hit once would have been, I thought sufficient, but life obviously knew I had to get hit twice to fucking get something. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, so I, yeah, from all those years I've come about having the same system, but being free from it. Yeah. My days aren't directed by it, and I don't go, end up where it would like to take me. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. So the problem does not exist for me today. Because I truly believe the problem doesn't exist as me. I don't see that I'm the one who did all that shit. I don't. I'm constantly getting calls when, uh, yeah. All right. So thanks. Thanks for letting me rant on. Yes. It's nice okay, to thanks, do it. In thanks, Paul. I'm waiting for the jello for today's lunch. So I'm happy I have all of you. I actually have rubber walls. You're not seeing it. I got a virtual background. Yeah. I'm wearing completely white and I'm in a straight jacket. Because <laughs> I'm dangerous to myself and others. <laughs> Thank you so much, really, for being here. Anyone? Thank you. Yeah. Are there any any questions, any hands, or any anything you want to type in the chat? Um, I don't think we've got anything at the moment. Well, if you're new or somewhat, and uh, I could, I like to suggest doing like a five minute inventory. Just go to page 64. I think it's in the third paragraph. And no matter what you think or something, just follow the instruction. What it says exactly in the book. Don't go to the other pages. Just look at being convinced self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. We will now look at its common manifestations. And the next paragraph starts with the word resentment. So the spirit of what I'm sharing is to look at the inventory to see how self has defeated us by recognizing its manifestations in our life. Yes. So you can finally because this parasite has an incredible strategy. It has convinced the host that it's the host. Yeah. So no matter how hostile it, it treats us, we can't entertain being free from it. We entertain being free as it, which is a form of bondage of self. Wanting to be free as self is bondage of self. Yeah. Don't fool yourself. It's bondage of self. Yeah. This is about being free from it. Yeah. How are you going to finally see it's not you by recognizing its manifestations in your life and not calling them yours? Yeah. So do a five minute inventory. Take a fear, past or present, doesn't matter a resentment, write it down and get to the fourth column and see, see the information as manifestations of selves, not your resentments, not your fears, not your harming. You can do, you can have all of yours at any other time, but for this little ex exercise for five minutes, see these things you call yours as manifestations of self in one life. Yeah. If you don't like what it brings about, take the glasses off and, you know, do it your way. You're under the grace of a new employer. It doesn't matter, really. You're going to be taken care of. But for some who are acutely driven crazy by selfing, 
it's good to have an understanding of the exact nature of the wrong. And the exact nature of wrong is not you. <laughs> yeah, you're not the exact nature of the wrong in this case. Yeah. yeah. You're you you're a food. Yeah, you're a, a, a means of transportation and expression. Something has taken you over. You want to call it the old employer. You want to call it a parasitical movement, demonic possession, foreign pathogen, do whatever. But image or picture it as something as not you. Yeah. Yes. And then we do the inventory. We make the amends because when in Rome, you do as the Romans do. So everyone sees Whatever ever happened through you, you were the doer of it, so we're responsible. And then you, when you look at all your role in life, you're going to see self's role in life. Yeah. And now you'll move to another phase called accountability, where, yeah, my dog shit on the neighbor's lawn, but I did not shit on the neighbor's lawn. It's very clear that the dog shit on the neighbor's lawn. Yeah. And I'm not the dog, so I'm not going to be worrying for 30 years about shitting on the neighbor's lawn. Yeah, <laughs> because I didn't. It's that simple. Yeah. Do you feel you were compelled to do shit while under the influence? Or do you feel like you were in control every second of the way? Yeah. How did it feel? Did it feel like, yeah, you were running the show completely? You got all the desired results you wanted. Yes. You completed the mission that you thought you were the conductor of, and you're completely satisfied with the results. How it worked out. Far out. Yeah. Yeah. Or did the couch they sent you suck? It's not even the picture you saw. Yeah. All the springs are broken, and you can't seem to return it. Yeah. No, they're not answering. The store's closed. Temper, you know, permanently. You now you're stuck with a huge couch that sucks. Yeah. So, all right. Thanks, man. Anyone else? If not, we can just have a shorter meeting. Maybe you can go and do a five-minute inventory. Yep. We got Deborah's hands up, Ben. All right, Deborah. Thank you, Paul. I missed a couple of meetings and I'm so glad to be back. Um, it, uh, my question is that um, when you said being under the influence, so like alcohol, selfing is like being under the influence of selfing, right? Yes, yes, very much so. And um, a lot of fear has been coming up for me of, uh, the selfing getting me in trouble and um uh i just need to not put the my on there and just watch it i guess right well yeah or at least realize you didn't you're not the the one who put the my there the head does right. that yes. you didn't do it you didn't do it you did not drive you crazy. Something has driven us crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like that rose bush. And it has an extreme case of self-centeredness. And it's not blooming. And it's seeing all the other rose bushes blooming. So it's blaming itself for being a terrible rose bush. And on and on and on and on. And then it gets so, in, you know, uh, you know, caught up by the story. It doesn't want to have it, it. That's its belief now. It will defend its right of being a bad rose bush and never blooming. But what happens if you just put that in, you know, it's in a pot that's too small. It doesn't have any good soil or fertilizer. It's not getting enough light and it's not getting water. That's what causing it not to bloom. It's not a non-blooming rose bush. Yeah. Right. I did it. No. If it's moved to a different condition, it will bloom. Yes. 
we're under a lot of mental conditions where the problem reside, alcoholism, that are excessively obsessed over one particular thing, this idea of being self, yeah? The story, the character, the author of the book, yeah? And we've been become fascinated with it. And if the theme of that book is for you to be right, you got to be wrong, you're going to be wrong a lot. And then your head will be right about it, yeah? It's just like a fucking experiment and something's gone wild. <laughs> and you're the, you're the, at the effect and are the experiment, yeah? So why are you in so much fear today? Isn't it because self-reliance has failed you? Exactly. Mm -hmm. What is that? Trusting the infinite. What is that? Faith in the finite. I mean, f trusting the finite. What is that? Faith in the finite. What? Where is the faith abiding in? The thoughts. Yes. They call it our reasoning. It's the thinking. Yes. The thinking is infected with alcoholism. And the thinking is infected with selfing. Yeah. The alcoholism amplifies some of the aspects of selfing. Not the generous or loving, you know, having huge empathy, but vindictiveness, smallness, jealousy. Yes. It amplifies it. Right. Um, and it, it seems like I started discovering that it's like um, resentment, the underlying thing, fertilizer for resentment is actually a, a fear. Of course it is. The whole thing so, is rooted on anxiety. Why? Yeah. When there's a reliance on a failed system, that's what the reaction is going to be. Anxiety that it's going to fail again. <laughs> Why? Yeah, it seems, right. It seems like I can kind of almost see through resentment now as like there's something about the selfing that feels uh, a type yeah. of fear, anxiety yeah. about. Yeah. Right. Because it's not going to get what it wants or so lose right. what it has. It's going to lose or it's going to, yeah. Or someone else is going to win. That means you're going to lose. It right, goes right, right. Yeah. Things are just, you know, sometimes you become aware of the thorn by getting stuck with it, but the thorns are out all the time. Right. Sort of like you have a beater truck that no one would want. You misplace it and immediately think someone stole it. It's just fucking incredible. Yeah. Sorry. Who stole my truck? And everyone around you is laughing. Who'd want the fucking truck? You know? Yeah. And now right. you've gotten people, let's look around. I want to find who got this. And he just forgot where he parked it. Yeah. But the, right. your head's insane. It's like in a, it's like the trigger is ready to squeeze. Yes. At any moment. Yeah. This is fuck. That actually happened to me in real life. Uh, and I, uh, I uh, lived right by a grocery store in an apartment. And I, after work, I drove my van and got my groceries and forgot that I drove my van there and walked across the street to my apartment. <laughs> then I was really in depression and stuff. And the next morning I got up to go to work and it's like, where's my van? Who took my van? I know. I know. Amazing. And it was over at the grocery store. <laughs> and then you got to rationalize it. Well, maybe they needed it more than I did. So yeah. we learned to deal with shit not working. Oh, maybe it's for the best. And all this right, goes on. Right. It's, it's too funny. Selfing and what, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, it was I, a good I, laugh. Was that bad. <laughs> Someone was more deserving than it. You know, it's just incredible. It just goes off. It's it's amazing. It's like inner conflict of angel demon all the time or something. Yeah, but it's its own conflict. You're yeah, not it in agitation. <laughs> it says you're in the agitation. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that you go on a train of selfing and when it stops, it seems like it's immediate and nothing actually happened? Yes. Yeah. Here at the station, even though you were on a train going 80 miles per hour, when it stops, you're still at the same station. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
it's always here. Now, doesn't that get you sooner or later? Doesn't it inform you of something? Yeah. Yeah. All these trips are ma imaginary at best. Mm -hmm. Never leave the prior condition of, of spirit. It's just there. Yeah, we are of that. We can be in of a, in a, and out of a lot of shit, but we are of spirit. Yeah. But we can be in and out. The head goes in and out all day of things. Yeah. But we are of spirit. Yeah. So all the chaos and all the agitation doesn't represent the deepness of the ocean. The deepness of the ocean isn't being affected by the waves on the surface. <laughs> They're actually the currents of the deepness of the ocean are producing the waves with the wind and everything. Yes. They're not being affected by the waves. Right. Yeah. What, where do we usually live on? We live on the surface. We're bouncing around like crazy. And when shit doesn't go well, we have ways of rationalizing it and on and on and on. Basically excusing a system that's failed. Yeah. Instead of just telling the truth, the horse you're riding has been dead for quite a while. <laughs> just get off. Yeah. <laughs> Thank but you I, so much. <laughs> I'm in that horse. Okay. Well, so, <laughs> you know, AA is going to, you know, AA takes care of all of us. If you can just stay sober a day at a time. Some people would like to have or entertain the possibility of outgrowing self or getting you know, relief from the bondage of self because the self, the bondage of self is really prior to alcoholism. It is. Yes. Alcoholism wouldn't be able to land on us unless there was the obsession with self. Yeah. So, so, and, and it's fine. I mean, a lot of people I know are happy, joyous and free living their life, playing softball, going to picnics. Yeah. And yet others in the same community more is needed because there's still an, a strong irritability, restlessness, and discontent from the prior condition. Yes? Mm -hmm. so I don't see that as a life worth living in a way because I feel it's like a slavery. Yeah? I feel like it's a slavery. I feel like something is using me to live its own little agenda. Yeah? And I'd like to I like to outgrow those conditions. I would, yeah. So that may need a little more looking, yeah. And maybe the willingness to try a new pair of glasses on and see if this really produces a clarity of what's going on, yeah. Because I see humbly the one direction on page sixty four, and it's, and it's presented in um, numerous ways. I take look at your defects and shit like that. But in that sentence, it's stating a whole other way of looking at the inventory, which is self, yeah, and its manifestations is what has defeated us. I'm super keen on that because I've, that brought me a huge relief. Yeah, it did. It brought me a huge relief more than seeing them as my resentments and my fears. Yeah, so... And I just didn't think it was uh, uh, consistently put out in the community. I never heard it, really. And I felt it was like one size fits all. These are your characters and your resentments. And I just felt like, why go through the car wash and still have a dirty car? You know, fuck. <laughs> just to say I went through the car wash, but I'm still captured by resentment, fears, and harms done to others because I'm calling them mine. I just can't. So here we are for years putting it out because I'd like to, if, if, I don't know what it will be like for you, but if it's anything like what it's done with me, fucking I'll be here till the cows come home putting it out. Yeah. It's the, it's the difference that makes all the difference. <laughs> I feel, and therefore I'm willing to 
put it out there. If it wants to use me to put this shit out, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Thank I mean. you so much. Yeah, I, 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 I'm already. It's like a recognition of the fruits of that. It's hard for me to explain it, but just uh, sometimes I just. It's like this peaceful and seeing beauty even in stuff that I didn't used to think that was beautiful, but it's a wholeness of of seeing instead of this partiality of you know I can't explain it but just driving to work yesterday it just it's almost like it just the glasses came on all the the sudden yeah uh so I am uh and this is that's why what you say it makes all that the difference you know well, then, yeah. yeah that's how I humbly feel about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like uh it's at least it's a description of the exact nature of the wrong you'll find out for at least but at least you have a description <laughs> yeah so you can see if it works for you or not but at least you have a description it's not vague yeah right it's accessible and you can see it <laughs> You can see manifestations and you can see that something in me keeps calling them mine. And maybe that is the suspect I need to look at. What is it that keeps calling manifestations from somewhere else mine? <laughs> I would think it's that thing that's manifesting that's somewhere else. I think it's that's its little trick. Yeah. It has the host believing it's the parasite. <laughs> That's crazy to me. Yeah. So, and it's brought about a lot of relief and I can't, you couldn't take a calculator and total it up. It's, that's not, it's not, it's not like, you know, 800 pounds of relief or something. <laughs> it's, you can't weigh it or, but you sure as hell feel it. Yeah. And, and sense it. And especially as the years go by, it, it has a huge uh, influence in all these moment to moment uh, contacts. Yeah. Which I believe what that's what conscious contact is. I think that's what life is, is conscious contact. Yeah. We're all Thank in you. conscious contact. <laughs> yet in a way the head has us convinced of something that makes us seemingly unconscious to that. <laughs> Yeah, it just blows my mind, really. Yeah, really, it just blows my mind. It's so funny how everyone in in certain uh, like new age things, everyone was super afraid of having parasites when they've been had by a parasite, a mental one. <laughs> it's sort of funny. Everyone's afraid. First thing they want to find out when they get a test, are there any parasites? Yeah, because I believe we're... We've been taken over by a mental parasite. <laughs> and then the fear gets fucking weirdly, like, arthritically bent. So we're super afraid of getting taken over by physical parasites because we're taken over by a mental one. <laughs> it's funny, really. You know, it's funny. <laughs> It's sort of like Dracula going out on vampire hunts. It's great. <laughs> kill all the other vampires to shield that it's the big one. Yeah. <laughs> I hate parasites. <laughs> I hate the idea of some, something sucking the life out of something else while it's doing just that in a way. <laughs> oh, Mr. Parasites, what's your opinion of parasites? I hate them. I hate the parasites. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but aren't you a parasite? Oh, well, no, I'm Paul. <laughs> I've got Paul believing it anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the highest level of parasite. I'm seen as a host. That's unbelievable. For for the the greatest success of a parasitical life would be being seen as the host. 
it would be the perfect haven, the perfect place to park your boat. It would be perfect. You could feed, 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 and never, never have direct attention brought to you. Wow. Incredible, eh? Incredible strategy, I feel. So, hey, any anyone else have anything to say? If not, we'll, uh, what time is it here? Uh, it's almost an hour. That's all right, eh? Yeah. One of my uh, pipe dreams was pop last yesterday. I've been wanting to see this 1960 Ford panel truck. So uh, we drove up to Eureka to see it, which is like four hours away. Really like it, but I'm being oppressed by the practicality of of the new employer. <laughs> it didn't run well. It would, it would be a lot of work, but it, it's beautiful. So it was fun. I got to see beautiful redwoods and everything. This is what I believe that life, no matter how it looks on the scale of right or wrong or good or bad, has value. It's always, yeah, it's so incredible. As long as you're there, which you are, there's value. Yeah. You're not the haver of it. You're the giver of value. Yeah. You and I are the giver of value. Not as Paul, but as the conduit. Yes. It's how we see things. Yeah. And that can be altered. It can be changed. Yeah. The way you see things, maybe the things can't be changed, but the way you see them can be changed easily, obviously. Look at like when you put like rose colored glasses, you immediately see everything in that, that rosy whatever. It's not, it may not be as simple or easy as that or as quick, but it's, it is a principle. Yeah. How you see things can change dramatically. Yeah. And what kind of effect in your life will that have? That's for you to find out really. Yeah. Just borrow the pair of, just borrow the glasses and check it out. See if it works for you. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to say goodbye to everyone. Uh, let's start with Kurt. Always a pleasure. It's Turk, t Kurt has Texas Department of Corrections. Wow. That's my prison number. Oh, that was your prison number. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got Bill Churchman. There he is. We've got uh, Kathleen. She's in like a mini chair and he's got the massive one. Jesus. Yeah, he's got the big one. He's, he's got, six, six. Uh, Captain Kirk's whole family could sit on that one. Dude. <laughs> you got a Zulu seat. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, Mickey, the matriarch of Madeira. Always a pleasure, Mickey. You're one of the backbones. You're one of the cervical vertebrae of the Zoom. Yes. We got Bryant, Bryant W. Nice to see you, Bryant. We got Walter, the brother from another mother. There he is. Yeah. Always love seeing Walter. We're in this together, Walter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got Ben C. Thank you for your lovely job again, Ben. Always a pleasure. Alex and uh, Jacob. Wow, there they are. Yes. They must be in Seattle, unless you, uh, that picture would be pretty difficult to take on your carry-on. Oh, you can fold it up. Oh, that's cool. That's nice. Very nice. Yeah. Maybe that will be my uh, death shawl. I was thinking the funeral pyre will be the 60 panel truck and that you can cover it up and then just push me down a hill on Highway 101, light it on fire, and I'll go out blazing. <laughs> Nah. All right. We got Annette. Annette from Pennsylvania. Annette, I'm going to see you sometime. I yeah, haven't I seen you since 
anything I want to yet. talk to you. When well, you get you, your schedule? Well, I haven't done it yet, so I'm going to – maybe I'll work on it today a little bit. But I am going on the 23rd of June back east, so – and I got the 4th, 5th, and 24th to the 26th done. I just got to call up some people. All right? So you'll know. It'll be on Zen Bitch Lab. Okay, I'll talk to maybe one of your friends about, because my uh, home group has a meeting, but if it's not that, there's a big center around here that has lots of meetings, and I'd like to uh, advertise you. Yeah, well, send me, uh, just send me an email with your number, and I'll call you. How's Very that? well. All right, thank you. Yep. We got, that's on the website. You go through the website. Roman, nice to see you, Roman. We got Deborah, Deborah B., but love your shares, Deborah. Thank you for, uh, yeah. We got Kerry. Thank you, Kerry, for your, uh, your, your numeral donation. I like that. Hey, Paul, when you were talking, I got one thing to say with the, with the fire. It's, uh, Neil Young said it. I think it's better to burn out than to fade away. There you go. Yes. Well, I think I've already passed the point of being burnt out a long time ago. <laughs> I don't think you can relight a lit match. It doesn't. It's it's all burnt out. <laughs> it's to a point you can't even light it anymore. It's just yeah. So, but hey, thank you. Uh, let's see. We got Terry from the main. Main. Main is going to look really beautiful when the sun comes out. Kaiser. There he is. He's in Los Angeles now. We got Lucas. Oh, Lucas has uh, got a nice little uh, rim up there. That's nice. Nice to see you, Lucas. We got an iPhone. Yeah, she is. Nice to see you there. You're sideways, but hey, it's okay. Yeah, grateful D, always a pleasure. And thanks for putting up with the call on the uh, car yesterday. Our plan of getting home and time obviously didn't work. So whatever. Catherine, another, uh, another gal from Maine. Wow, we got Catherine and Terry, you know. All it takes is two, yeah, yeah. We got Joseph from France. Always a pleasure, Joseph. Nice to see you. We got Rob in Louisville. Uh, we got Annette, Pennsylvania. Oliver, Berlin, Bedra Bedraj. First things first, live and let live. Easy does it, yes. Zach K. All right, here we go. I think... Uh, Oh, Suzanne, Suzanne M. Thank you, Suzanne. I'm always happy to see her name. Thank uh, you so much, Paul, for everything you do. Oh, Thank you. Welcome. Yes, it's, it's definitely, definitely my pleasure for sure. Yeah, it's sort of an empty pleasure, but it's a pleasure nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> I think the empty pleasures are probably the best, really. But hey. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you if you're interested. ZenBitchSlap.com on the event page gives you all the information of Zooms and stuff. We have two recovery Zooms a week. And then we do another thing on a topic called non-duality. Uh, Tuesday afternoons, Wednesday night, Saturday. I think tomorrow is Friday. Yeah, Saturday. And Saturday is a live meeting we have in Marin City in San in right outside of San Francisco, one o'clock. So, hey, thank you. Have Thanks, a great Paul. day. Yes. See you guys. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, Ben.